guys. It's been a while. Uh, been kind of focused on school. I'm going to school for audio engineering right now. I've had a few questions about Sample BPM and Logic Pro X, and there's a bunch of different ways that you can do it. There's online web browsers that you can do. Just type in, I'll show you. You just go to Google and type in BPM counter. And the first one that pops up, you just tap a key on your keyboard. Make sure you click right here on this box, tap a key on your keyboard to the beat, and it'll give you the average of your clicks. You can do that. Or there's a BPM counter under metering BPM counter and they work for specific cases. I like to do the tapping of the BPM because you can kind of get, kind of gives it more of that MPC feel because you kind of tap in the BPM. You don't really, the the MPC doesn't give you exact like decimal points and for the uh, the exact song you're doing. Like it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. It might give you decimal points in a particular way based on how you clicked it, but it, it's not gonna just immediately give you exact perfect um, representation of the sample. BPM counter is pretty exact, but sometimes it doesn't work. It'll just continuously go on forever and it will never give you a number. That's most likely because there's not enough transient information for it to analyze, like drums. There's not enough drums in the song or something. And it's great. It'll give you decimal points, which are pretty precise. But the thing is, sometimes perfect is too perfect. And it takes away some of the the swing and the edge and the creativity and, and the way the performance was handled. And I kind of prefer tapping in the keys and getting things a little offbeat, but whatever you were feeling the groove of the song was, because that kind of feels more like uh, what goes on on an MPC when you're sampling. So I've been doing that. I have a, an app on my phone. It's like Metronome Pro or something. You tap in your BPM and it'll give you a click for whatever you're doing. Those are the main ways. What I'm going to be showing is this other way of doing things that I kind of go through. It gets the sample right every time. And the last method I'm going to be showing you is kind of what I use for, for doing loops. If I want to sample something kind of like how Bryson Tiller on the song Don't had that Swing My Way sample, and it consistently just went over and over. It never really switched up. If you want to do something like that, a perfect loop is really important. And if you set your loop a little off of your BPM, then as the loop continues, the timing is going to get more and more off. So what I usually do is I drop my sample in. I'm not going to use that one because it's in three-fourths timing. I'm going to use, I have this really great Erica Badu song. You drop your sample in, and then I'm going to go to the flex tool up here, turn that on, and then I'm going to turn on flex, and it's going to analyze the song. And the main reason I do flex is because it makes exact chops. If you want an exact loop, that's kind of the perfect way to do it. The BPM counter, I think, in Logic Pro X is not sufficient enough because sometimes your loops will be off, and there's ways to fix that using this method. So so what I'm going to first do is I'm going to cut off the beginning because you don't need that, and I'm just going to listen, and I'm going to count. I did it in my head. I'm not going to count in a video. You don't need to hear that. So what I was counting for was I was waiting till I heard four bars go by. You're going to want to drag the sample to the very beginning of the song. I've been having luck lately where it actually does drag to the beginning of the song. But if your sample that you end up chopping doesn't uh, go all the way to the beginning of your project, you're going to want to go to snap and then snap regions to absolute value. But it's usually by default. It's set to relative value, which is like a relative grid, which we don't really need to get into right now. So after you've got this kind of done, what you're looking for is you want the end of your sample to happen right here at the five. And to do that, all you have to do is go up to 120 and pull down, click on the BPM and just pull down until the tail kind of hits right at the five. You see how this is really close. But uh, if I were to loop that, notice the very end isn't long enough. So this is going to build up over time and my beats or my sample is going to be a little too early by the end of the song. It's just going to sound, you're going to be able to hear it. So what I do then is I just go and I option click the end of the sample and drag it right to the five. If I wanted to set the sample BPM or the, the BPM of the track, it'd be like 89.3 or something. And that'd just be kind of like unnecessary. And you'd be kind of going through numbers a lot. And you might even end up with four decimals. So moving the sample this much isn't going to do much. It's not going to create too many artifacts. So after you've done that, you should be able to freely loop your song. So let's go ahead and listen to that. Love this sample, dude. So there you go. And then you can lay your drums over it and all that. Now, 
I picked this sample for another reason, and that's because it's a little off time. And I've seen some people kind of touch on this before. It's uh, using flex to kind of keep things in time. But I'm going to show you a really easy way to do it. So let's say you were going to drop on some shit with an EXS24. So you're going to drop on some samples, but you find that your snares and your kicks, even though they're on the grid, they're off beat in your beat. It's the dumbest shit I've ever said. Okay, so now that you've kind of got your sample set up, there are cases where the sample won't fall perfectly on beat inside of your loop. And that's going to cause your MIDI, even though it's on the grid when you add drums, it's going to cause it to be off time or be perceived as off time because it's not going to be in time with the sample. Now, sometimes you're going to want to set the drum just kind of based off feel you don't want to quantize and then maybe that'll fix your problem but if you're kind of going for something that has a very like tight approach and you want your sample to be in time i'm going to show you a very quick way to do that um, i'm going to go ahead and play this sample so you have an example of when the beats off time from the drums obviously i have a kick that's not on time right there that's supposed to have some swing on it and yeah i have a kick right here it's not on the grid but that's not what i want you to focus on i want you to focus on right here when the song's playing It just starts getting off it starts feeling weird and it creates tension or something i don't know it's weird so yeah right there it's just not pleasant to listen to it makes it makes me kind of stress out because of the chaos that it kind of gives and that might be cool for you like some certain songs that might be interesting to to introduce at one part for me for a lot of people think they just want things to be tight and the performance to be there and things to just kind of go well so someone can just wrap on a beat quickly not have to worry about timing issues what you're going to want to do is click on the sample click flex again and where it says quantize just quantize i'm going to try eighth this might not work I mean, hold on, let's try fourth. Reset. I like that a lot, yeah. So I would go to quantize and choose either eighth or fourth. It just depends on what works best. What I want you to note is when I changed it from fourth to eighth, it said, do you want to keep or reset? You're gonna wanna reset because what's gonna happen when you do all this flexing What's going to happen when you do all these flex markers, it's going to introduce uh, artifacts. It's going to degrade the audio quality of your sample. And you really don't want to do that a lot. When you're compromising the quality of the rhythm in your song, you just got to make that call. One thing that I do after I've done this and I've kind of messed with timing, I'll go out of the flex view editor and I'll bounce this in place just so I kind of have a perfectly timed sample. And then I'll go back to the original and I'll turn off the quantization and I'll reset again. And that way, just in case I want to go back because I don't like what this sounds like. I just have a clean copy and I have the different copy. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you. Kind of, I kind of went over using Flex to set sample BPM and I kind of showed you how you can also get things in time. I've seen people talk about getting things in time using Flex and it kind of makes sense. That's the whole point of using it. But I just kind of wanted to show you when I would use it and why I would use it and uh, talk about why you don't want to use it. All right, so that's all I got for you today. I hope sampling in Logic Pro X is kind of demystified at this point. You kind of understand how to chop things up. You kind of understand how to set loops that are perfect so you can kind of, you know, throw your, your own keys on it, your own bass lines, your own drums, and have no f problem. You can do it all by yourself. I got some more videos coming. I don't post a bunch of videos. I'm not trying to waste your time. I just wanted to know that I appreciate the support a bunch. Y'all are funny as fuck and super kind. And I appreciate all of you. And I'm going to stop talking now. All right, see you, bye.